Hello there. Uh, my name is Sean McCullough. I'm a cloud security engineer, and I'm also the co-author of Security 541, which is the cloud security attacker techniques, monitoring, and threat detection class. Um, real quick, I wanted to do a, a video on some of the uh, resources that are out there for figuring out what kind of controls should I be putting in place in my Azure environment. If you're moving from an on-prem environment into the cloud, or, or maybe even if you've been there for a while and you realize, hey, I probably don't, we don't probably don't have the most secure environment. It's really great to start with some kind of set of resources or libraries or body of knowledge to figure out what should I be doing to lock down my environment. And so what I'm going to do today uh, is I'm going to walk you through just some of the resources that I rely on uh, that I've really liked and, and put into practice into my own day job and, and kind of show you where you can get them and how you might want to use them. Uh, all the links to these will be in the, uh, in the notes below. So uh, you just kind of see where I'm going from it and then you can go and look at them later. All right, so let's take a look at the first one that I like, um, which is from an organization called the Cloud Security Alliance. This is a, uh, actually, I think it's an international organization where they have user groups all throughout kind of, you know, United, United States uh, and throughout the world. And each group uh, really kind of focuses on a different problem in terms of cloud security. But the Cloud Security Alliance also publishes a ton of reports and white papers and best practices and things that you can go and read. And they're very detailed and in-depth. I really like them. Uh, one of the things that they have is the cloud controls matrix. Now, I'm starting off with this one because this matrix really gives you a, um, a demonstration about how different controls kind of interact and relate to each other. So you might be um, working in a particular organization that has to uh, adhere to DOD requirements or federal requirements in the United States. And so you might be interested in like NIST uh, uh, 853, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Or maybe you've heard of this thing called the CIS controls and you're really interested in that, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Wh whatever it is, this mapping um, does a really good job of kind of showing you how the different controls relate to each other. Uh, the other thing that this uh, CSA puts out is a security questionnaire, which I really like. Um, if you are going to go and buy or purchase a new cloud offering, um, you can take this questionnaire and maybe start asking questions about, hey, do you implement this security or this security? Now, I mean, if you're going to be going to, you know, Azure or, or Google or Amazon, they may not answer your questions. But um, as we get further and further into this um, software as a service and platform as a service world, I really believe we're going to have more and more boutique cloud offerings that your organization or your company might have might go work with. And you might have to ask some of these individual questions. And so this questionnaire is actually a really good place to do it. So under the, C uh, the Cloud Security Alliance, you can go and download, and I'm not going to bring up their presentation because you can go and download it from there, but you can go and see these detailed controls that they have. And so I really do like uh, the CSA controls. Another organization that I'm really a fan of is uh, the Center for Internet Security, so CIS. Uh, this is a nonprofit org, uh, company that creates a whole bunch of best practices, but not just for cloud environments. This is, is for across different technologies, where CSA is very cloud focused. Um, uh, CIS has been looking at enterprise and Linux and, and other kinds of uh, services. Um, they build what's called the CIS. Uh, it used to be called the top 20 critical controls. I always, I say top 20, but the latest version, which is version eight, I think only has 18. I, well, anyways, uh, it doesn't really matter. But um, they have these controls that really lay out, this is the thing you want to do in your environment. And here's are this 18 top things. Now, these are big picture things. So here's number one, uh, CIS control inventory and control of assets. Okay, that's, that's huge, right? And so um, there's a whole bunch of like individual things like uh, unauthorized assets, um, figure out how, if you have unauthorized assets. Do, or do you know if computers or, or phones are being uh, connected to your, in, uh, your network? Uh, do you know when that happens? Do you know if, if they're approved or not? 
Um, and so they have some specifics in there. And then like CIS control two is inventory of software at assets. Do you know what's installed on your system? Now, the, and, and you can go through, you see data protection. These are great. They're very, uh, they're laid out with 18. They're very easy to read. When I go and look at this, I, I say, okay, I understand what they're trying to say. I don't have to read a whole bunch of weird language uh, written in, you know, government ease in order to understand what's going on. So for instance, you know, I can kind of go in and, and, and click this and I say, okay, let me read what this means. Here's just a couple sentences about what this control means. I understand. So it's very easy to read. It's not specific to, um, to cloud specifically, but you can see that they do have, um, uh, connections to CSA. So they tell you how they're mapping, which is what we saw before with CSA. So they're all, all these organizations are starting to cross map. But CSA or CIS puts out uh, something called benchmarks. There's a benchmark for Azure, and these are specific, descriptive ways in which you can lock down your Azure environment. So it will specifically say for your Azure um, storage uh, service, you make sure that your storage account um, is has encryption for all the resources. And here is how you would audit that. And here is how you would uh, implement that. I really like that. Very detailed. And then they map it to the CSA security control. I mean, I'm sorry, CIS control. The names are too similar. Um, the other thing they do is they have uh, benchmarks for Linux and they have benchmarks for Windows. And so you can go and see, how do I lock down my Windows server? How do I lock down my CentOS machine? So it's very specific things. How do I lock down my AWS uh, uh, virtual machines, right? So very prescriptive. I love the benchmarks. They're, go and grab them. Um, you have to, when you go and download them, uh, you'll click this download, and then you'll have to enter your first name, last name. I've never had them uh, really email me and say, hey, you know, would you like to sign up? Like, the, you fill it out. I feel comfortable with them, so you can go ahead and do that. The next thing I want to show is something from Azure itself. Remember, this we're specifically talking about uh, Azure systems. Um, Azure uh, has the, its own set of security controls. And so uh, version three, I'm gonna scroll up to it. So version three is the current version. Um, and the Azure security control uh, describes how would you implement security? Uh, and they focus, uh, where CSA and, and CIS are a little bit more generic, this is very much specifically saying for network, here's how you do networks um, segmentation. And of course, look, Here's my CIS controls that I map to. So they're they're interacting, they're they're mapping back to back and forth. This is a control. It's not a it's not a uh, applied specifics on how you would do it. This describes uh, why I would want to do network segmentation. Uh, how I would want to do. Let's look at another one that's a little more specific. Asset management. Right, so I can click asset management and I've got an, a number here, which I can re re relate back to and track assets and inventory and their risk. Oh, that sounds like a CIS control that I just saw. And there's more descriptions that is a little more specific to Azure, describes how you can use some of the Azure tooling. So if you're in Azure, this is a really great um, service or um, set of resources to try and build your implementation for. Now, Azure also has something uh, called that, well, let's see, actually, we pull it up down here. Azure has security baselines for specific services. So I can go and look at storage, which is way down. Look at all these things. This is great, right? So for storage, I can go look at storage and I've got a very specific, how would I protect it? Now, um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that, um, Whereas Azure's uh, security controls, which I was just kind of showing, which is like the why would I do this? Azure security controls is version 1.3. Not all of these prescriptive guidances are mapped to that version. For instance, uh, this one's mapped to version 1.0. So they, although they, they are specifically, you can use them today, they don't map to the latest version of the controls, which I thought was really odd. Uh, in CIS, um, there's the set of controls, and then they have their prescriptive benchmarks, and they're mapped together. 
these aren't quite as mapped together, but you can go through and you can look and say, okay, for how, network security, how would I do some? Or actually, let me let me rephrase that. Security baseline for Azure Storage. All right, so I've got an Azure Storage and uh, service, I or storage account. I need to lock it down. The first thing I need to do is make sure that the uh, there's network security that I have boundaries put in place. The great thing about this is that when you go down here, you can actually look and if you go click this link here, it will give you the policy to implement that security implementation. CIS benchmarks will give you um, AWS, or I'm sorry, Azure commands, but in here, you're actually gonna get uh, the policy, the Azure policy that you can use to apply. Now you'll you'll take this and you'll manipulate this for your environment, but it's a really good um, uh, resource for that. So I like that this is very prescriptive. I, I don't like the fact that it's a little bit outdated, but it's actually kind of easy to, it, it only took me like an hour to upgrade all of these to the you know version of um, uh, 1.3 of the Azure baseline. I'm sorry, Azure controls. All right. So I looked at it, so like um, if you're doing anything with government or, or FedRAMP and that you have to be uh, you have to work towards FedRAMP or something like that, you're going to be dealing with the uh, National Institute of uh, Standards and Technology, right? And so um, this is a set of guidelines, uh, SP 800-53, reversion five, like you know. That's a lot, lot of words, but basically this is a very, very detailed, specific set of controls. Uh, for your Azure environment, you would not be implementing all of these. You would have to figure out which ones you're going to implement. And whereas CIS controls are very um, easy to read and Azure you know, benchmarks are very specific to uh, the Azure environment, the NIST controls can be a little bit more complicated to understand. They're very verbose. There's a lot of detail in there. Um, and so it would take some works. But what's really nice, if I click over here, um, oh, and I, I, I pulled up like the NIST 853 control document, the specific document, and it's very detailed, right? I mean, you can see just a ton of things with great footnotes. So, But if you have to do FedRAMP, you have to do NIST... Um, controls, um, or if you're interested, you want to do this controls because you want to be really locked down. This has everything in it, right? So it's got all, got it all. But Azure does have these things called built-ins. And there are built-ins specifically for different compliance requirements. So for Australia or um, Azure Security Benchmarks, which we've already looked at, um, or the CIS Azure Benchmarks, right? So the CIS Benchmarks, there's a very prescriptive, well, let me, let me click down to the FedRAMP. Uh, or the NIST, right? Yeah, we'll look at FedRAMP. So if I have to do FedRAMP, because I, I have to do something with um, uh, the Department of Defense uh, or government, um, I, have a, I have this detail about how would I implement the controls, the NIST controls, in order to support 853 FedRAMP Australian requirements. And again, if you scroll down, you can see that for the controls that are documented here, you can click the link and you can see the policies that you need to, the, the Azure technical policies that you need to put in place to implement whatever this control is. Map back to NIST or map the FedRAMP or to CIS. So very prescriptive, great detail. Um, it this kind of helps kind of bridge the gap between um, the very complicated and how would I actually implement it. And I showed you the policies, so the different policies, and they're all in GitHub, so they're free for anybody to go look at. All right, so those are just some some of the uh, um, resources that I use to look at for compliance and security implementation. The other resource that I always really go after is uh, and take a look at is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So if you're, um, let me pull that up, because the MITRE ATT&CK framework uh, is not a compliance framework. But the minor attack framework really gives you a good view of, hey, how would somebody be attacking my environment? And so I can look at different matrices, and one of them is cloud, and uh, one of them Azure AD, or infrastructure as code. And you can look at specific ways in which an attacker may be attacking your environment. And you'll see sometimes in CIS or in NIST, they will reference back to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. 
And so whereas there's a defensive view, this is more on the offensive view. But it's another resource that you can use to go and look and figure out, all right, once I implement these controls, why? How would somebody be attacking me? All right, so those are just some of the controls um, and, and resources that, that I use uh, when uh, locking down a, uh, Azure environments. Hopefully that's helpful to you. My name's Sean McCullough, and thanks for listening.